Thank you very much for the introduction. I wanna go very quick. I have uh, too many slides. I think I just wanna show you a little bit about the, the, the places that we are collaborating. That is the NIH mainly. Uh, that's the place where I, where I was working. And this is the University of Texas at San Antonio. We are there in two different places, the Grigi Chintas Cancer Research Institute and the Department of Electrical Engineering. Uh, this is the title of the algorithm. As you see, we are computational biologists in trying to improve the identification of cell typing. So why we are we interested in this? It would be very nice to have a sample, and then magically we can have the different cell types, proportions in our sample for each one of the cell types, right? That's That would be really nice. So, however, we know that in that process to get to the cell typing, there are many different steps that normally produce problems. And then after we, this biology, do this black box, and then we have uh, the data getting into the sequencer, and we get this nice matrix. In the case of single cells, we have genes and cells. And then we do the downstream ana the analysis, the, the control, quality control, normalization. We check the different clusters, and then we can do the downstream analysis, cell typing, and it's a differential gene expression. And many questions can be asked after we complete this process. However, as I said, there are many sources of noise and disturbance on this data. So in my lab, what we did is to do an analysis of all the, well, a good number of the algorithms are being published for single cell, and we apply what we know that our, uh, what our students are experts or are becoming experts, that is machine learning and deep learning. And this is just the pipeline that at the end we, 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 we use, includes the alignment, preprocessing, normalization, dimensionality re the reduction to be able to visualize the data, and then cell type identification that we're gonna look into that problem. Now, we were talking about the single cell we are talking about the spatial transcriptomes. In this case, besides having the number of transcripts, we have their position. That is the, the great thing, right? Each one of these dots is a transcript, and now we know a position X and Y that goes in the order, depending on the size of the sample of micrometers. And we want to do cell typing, right? We want first, as we know, as we see in the case of a spatial transcriptomics, we have the transcripts. So one thing that we need to do first is to do cell segmentation to identify the, the borders of the cells. Each one of these is a cell and then identify the transcripts within that cell. Then we can count them and we can go to a process again of cell type. And so what, what we did in this case is we are doing experiments in using the spatial information. Here I wanna show you today what about if we take the cells, this, let's say that this is my cell of interest, and I establish a radius, and I count the number of different cell types that I have surrounding. Here is a little exaggerated. I can use 240, 120 units, and I will get the, the cells that are around my cell of interest. And uh, so for this, we use the data from COSMX. It's a, uh, high resolution spatial transcriptomic data that already do that. I don't want to go into the details, but they already have a process, a pipeline to identify the borders of the cells. That means the cell segmentation, and they also do the cell typing. For you, we took that cell typing for several reasons as the grand root, and we use a model, a deep learning model. In this case, a transformer in the evolution of the. Uh, the artificial intelligence algorithms. This is one of the state-of-the-art models. This is a normal transformer, and here we include addition the spatial information, and we predict the cell typing. We see that we have a very good 95 percent. This is the confusion matrix, in which tells you that, for example, can I from from two more cells that are really two more cells? How many I predict right? And we see that we predict those two more, two, 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 2,646 as two more, one as five or blah, 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 right? 
and the rest for the, the rest of the column showed that. So the prediction was very good. And, uh, and the, then we say, well, okay, we already have an algorithm that we see that we can improve, we can make better the prediction. So we took these samples from data. Uh, this is a special high resolution transcriptomic data and we start looking at it. So we ask what we can look besides having the different cell types. Here is the different clustering. This is a, a, a we, we high dimension, right, data that we are looking in two dimensions as clusters, and each cluster is identified as a different cell type. So but besides that, what else we can look? We can go back after we mark the cell types and look at the tissue, right? Where are, for example, my cancer cells located with a, within a slide of tissue? And we start seeing that, yeah, the, the cancer cells, in, they try to have a tendency to cluster together. That's what we expect, right? In, in some cases, depending on the state of the cancer, we will see these clusters. And then after that, we say, what about the, if we try to check what is the differential the expression at the periphery of the tumor region compared to the cells that are around it, that are not cancer cells. In order to identify if there is a, a, a main cell type that is in the periphery of our cancer regions. That was what, what we wanna know. And we saw that this is, each one is a patient, it's a tumor. And we see that, yes, there is a significant cell type, in this case, epithelial and fibroblasts that are uh, significantly higher proportion at the periphery of the tumor region. So we look at some of the genes that we found at those, when we do the differential gene expression analysis between those two regions. And I'm showing here, here two genes that are very interesting because they are associated with clinical progression of the of lung cancer. Um, I have this gene here. We see that in some regions is this yellow, yellow dots are the transcripts of KRT19. This is one of the samples of tissue, but these look at this one in which the patient is already, the, the tumor the, is already at 85%. So this is, we see, we don't see any more those clusters and we don't see that in the periphery. And we look at a different gene, TM4S1, that is a transmembrane six family gene. And we we'll see that this also at the periphery of the tumor. So we can look, assume, do assume in this region and see this, the blue is the border of the cells. So most of the transcripts in this case are at the level of the membrane. So here, the resolution that we have is intracellular. We can locate the transcripts within the nucleus, cytoplasm, on even the membrane that correspond to the blue line here. This gene is also related uh, to the pro uh, promotion of proliferation of and migration and invasion of non-small cell lung cancer. Um, so the, the observations that we have from this study that is doing one of my students is that we can predict, we can improve the prediction of cell types by using the spatial information and the application of deep learning. Uh, the spatial characteristics show that cancer cells are smaller. That's an observation that we are analyzing. We see that as general. The cells, the cancer cells have a tendency to be smaller. Cancer regions are wrapped by the endothelial and fibroblast cells mainly. And differential gene expression show that peripheral cancer cell expressions can promote proliferation, migration, and invasion in non-small cell lung cancer. Now, I just wanna say thank you to all my collaborators. We are at the University of Texas, and we are looking for students. In fact, the student that work in this project is a student from Mexico that came over there. Thank you. Did you have any questions? No? Um, uh, yeah, there is one.
Um, really neat talk, especially thinking about it after you know, the talk I just gave where I'm talking about you know, the different signals and things in the cell. So you're on your vivid slide, you said the peripheral cells around the peripheral cancer cells are expressing certain signals. Could you talk about that a little bit more? Oops. Peripheral cancer cells are expressing yeah, certain signals. Um, first, we, we thought that it was a complete tumor. So Carla, the student that is working on this, also suggests why we don't compare just the periphery with the, the cells that are outside, close to the periphery, and also to the inner side of the, the cancer region. And we saw that there are genes that are differentially expressed compared to those two sites that are just at the periphery. Um, and that's why we thought that they could be interesting because those cancer cells, they are all cancer cells in the tumor region, it seems to have a differential, a, a different signature. And that we, we may think, we, we hypothesize that it's related to the growing of the, of the tumor region. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Very nice uh, study. One uh, question I always wonder about the spatial uh, omics or transcriptomics is uh, this is always planar, it's not three dimensional. How do you handle the three dimensional reality? In, in this case, we haven't get to that point with the COSMX, this, this technology, allows you seven layers of uh, 3D in that dimension, in the C dimension. We want to analyze that uh, uh, later. We haven't done to the, this point. Uh, for now, I understand that they may be within that thin layer, we may have different cell types. And that is a source of, of error probably for the cell type. So in, in, in fact, so the, the analysis so far is you are like a slice, a slides, no, of the in this, case, at... yeah, in this case, we just consider like we have one slide. Okay. But if you look at this data in the future, we have seven, seven okay. layers oh, that we okay. can uh, analyze. Uh, the, the problem with that is that these data is, is still, the technology is great, but the still is in its beginning. So you, yeah. have a, you don't have enough reads. Okay. So you can do, a, a, I think, a, a, about 2,000 genes maximum. Uh, per cell. Havana, uh -huh, and, they, and so have that limitation. And also you need to consider exactly what you're saying, that at some point you may not have that cell at that region, but this in the 3D. You're getting okay. genes, you're getting transcripts for an immune cell, but that immune cell is overlapped by an epithelial cell, for example. So at that point, you need to make a decision, right? But the algorithms we suppose that learn, is learning that. Is learning, I see more transcripts for epithelial cells. So I'm gonna call it epithelial. You have more reads. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you don't have the immune cell in the next layer down. 